In a small resort town in the Sierra Nevadas, black bears and humans live together in a four square mile area. Ma'am, move away. And there's only one man to keep a dangerous situation from turning deadly. Get out of there, get out. Shame on you. This is the story of Steve Searles. It's his job to keep people safe from bears. Stop it. And bears safe from people. Leave that bear alone, folks. So when someone here calls 911 about a bear, 911 calls Steve Searles. Ooh. Ooh. The Bear Whisperer. All right. All right. What a. <laughs> example of, that, of a bear, just huge claws, huge Popeye arms, and that huge head. And now here we are in the middle of town. Mm. It's great quiet time and thoughtful time when you're with, that close with a bear. It's 7 a.m. in Mammoth Lakes, California. While most people are just rising from bed, Steve Searles is taking inventory of dozens of black bears who make this their home. A bear in our community is seen as a, a quality of life. When we see a bear go through our front yard, it makes the day better. And this Eastern Sierra location is ideally situated for a large bear population. We have just a huge amount of habitat in our community, uh, lots of green belts and parkways. And uh, of course, the community being so small, uh, we're surrounded by thousands of square miles of habitat. Mammoth Lakes is a resort town, a getaway for millions every year. And bears are the most celebrated residents. Both locals and tourists adore them. Wow, you don't see this every day. A bear was eating off of a bush, and uh, so we got to get up really close to it. Up here on the lake, we've actually experienced the bears coming down in the water and bathing and just kind of splashing around. It's just it's spectacular. I never got this close to a bear. What people forget is that these creatures can be dangerous. Adult males can be seven feet tall, weigh up to 800 pounds, run 35 miles per hour, and kill someone with a single swipe of their razor sharp claws. It's going out. It's coming. Could a black bear be dangerous? Absolutely. By his own will, he could strike out and hurt someone, or it could be an accident where you have him confined in an area and he knocks you over trying to get away. But for more than a decade, not a single person has been hurt by a bear in Mammoth Lakes. Steve Searles plans to keep it that way. He's a self-taught black bear expert the town has come to rely on to keep bears and people safe. Good morning. Good morning. He's out of trouble last night. I hear you talking. Oh, wow. Chopping, uh, blowing. These are all just uh, him asking me, gosh, can you leave me alone? I want to get some sleep. It's kind of like I act in the morning, too. I know, I know. Every spring, the bears come out of hibernation. Before long, they become eating machines. In just six months, they have to put on as much as 200 pounds to survive the next winter. The easiest way to do that is to forage in town. Black bears are real smart. Uh, they learn real early how to get food, and not wild food, to get into a building, get into a vehicle, trash can, or a bird feeder. They realize it's effective, and they stick with it. Nothing could be worse, because once the bear learns those bad habits, and they spend more time around people, there's a greater probability that something might happen where a bear could hurt a person. In most other towns, bears that get too close to humans are routinely destroyed. But in Mammoth, where the animals are so highly prized, it's Steve's job to keep bears and people apart. 
and he's come up with some pretty unconventional ways for doing that. As much as I care and love for the bears, I'm professionally mean to them. Get out of there. I will haze or harass them. Let's go. Come on. But it reinstills their natural fear of humans. I know, just back up and we'll be all good. Of the psychological play that I have on bears and the ability to uh, outwit them, to uh, con them, to scare them, dominate them, if you will. The bears in our community think that I'm the biggest, baddest bear of all. Shut up. No one's sure what the bears think, but clearly what Steve's doing is working. Hold right there. All right, you guys, across the bridge, let's go. Since he started his unique brand of wildlife management in Mammoth 12 years ago, he hasn't had to shoot a single bear. If you're going to shoot a bear for black bear management uh, within a community, um, that's about the worst uh, failure you could have. Give them some little bit of room to come through. You're going to have another bear come right into that same spot, and you're going to have to start the lessons over again. Uh, we like to keep our bears alive and learning. And uh, every year that goes by, the older they get, the more they learn. Uh, the easier they are to work with. What a good boy. There we go. Hello. Steve averages 20 calls a week from police and residents. Hi, Josh. The calls range from people afraid of the bears. All right, I understand. To people afraid for the bears. He's been there all since yesterday. Since yesterday? Yeah. One of Steve's first calls this spring is about a young male who's spotted too close to a busy street. What are you doing here? You are way too close to town. What are you doing? No, 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 no. None of that. Bluff charging is just the same as our communication. We just misinterpret what we're hearing. And the bear's saying, you know, if you could just give me some space, I'd really appreciate it. You're making me feel anxious. You're OK. You're OK. All right. All right. When Steve doesn't know a bear, he videotapes it to add to his catalog. That's how he keeps track of the bears in town each season. Just a beautiful young bear, 18, 19 months old. He's black as an ace of spades uh, with that white uh, patch on his chest. Uh, he's just so attractive. And so um, just get my bears names that I can associate with day or night. And uh, we're going to go ahead and give him the name Ace. You can see that this bear is, is too young to be away from its mother. It's small. Uh, very small, uh, doesn't know the ways of the world. You are way too close to cars and people. You can see the cars in the background going by. He's wedged in uh, a busy traffic area. Just doesn't have the common sense yet to uh, stay out of predicaments like this. You need to keep an eye on him and babysit him a little bit. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. This is not good. Go back. Son of a... You bad bear! Go on! You almost got hit by a car. Go on now. Go on. Gosh, I've picked up too many dead bears on that road over the years, and don't want to pick up this one. Get! Get up there! What do the bears learn from me? Uh, they learn boundaries, just like with children, dogs, anything else you're teaching. They need to uh, understand their boundaries. Enough of that. They're not in their comfort zone when they don't have those boundaries. No more, you almost got hit by a car. You scared me to death. You hunker down and stay there. I guess this is going to be a long summer. It's going to take some work to keep him on the right track. More than three dozen bears live in the Mammoth area. During the feeding season, they hide out in a variety of different places. 
They can be found in trees, inside drainage culverts, and under porches of empty cabins. As Steve takes his daily inventory, he not only checks out which bears are in town, but he also monitors their condition. He finds a familiar one he calls Ugly Bear, hiding in a drainage culvert beneath a golf course. I was worried about you. How come you didn't come out last night? Are you hurt? He's a male. We call him Ugly Bear. Big, big adult bear. I'm about seven feet from him. Oh. All right, I understand. Dude, I've got to check you out. If you're not in good health, that's bad. It's not like you to not be out. Did you eat something bad? Have you been shot? What's up with you? Your face is just tough to look at, but... Oh. Oh, dear. Come on, let's stand up. Can you stand up for me? I'll see you. I don't see any blood or anything. You still look sick, dude. All right, all right. Can you walk? Can you walk? I'm gonna leave you alone right now, but I'm gonna check on you later, okay? I can see that. Now I feel bad for calling him ugly, uh, but uh, looks like uh, something's wrong with him. I don't know what, I don't see any blood. I don't know what's going on with the bear. He might got tapped by a bumper, uh, could have gotten into bad food. I don't want to push him too hard. I'm going to give him the rest of the afternoon and just sleep. It's uh, part of working with bears. Sticker. Here you go. Thank you for saying thank you. Steve's work with bears has made him somewhat of a local celebrity. We know he takes very good care of the, the bears, and it's been amazing to talk to him because he seems to know each and every bear, uh, which is very unusual. Was he bigger than me or littler than me? Littler. Littler, okay. He actually knows how many bears are in town, where they live, what their habits are and it's a fantastic asset to this town. Steve really cares a lot about the bears and knows what he's doing. Uh, all my friends, everybody I know is really in favor of what he's doing and thinks he does a great job. Any other distinguishing marks? He's pretty famous in the summertime. A lot of people know him. He's always around, uh, really involved with the town. He's a good guy. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Have a good day. Despite his reputation as the bear guardian, Steve didn't set out to protect them. I used to uh, live in Southern California, moved up here 31 years ago, didn't know where it was, uh, was looking for a better lifestyle and bought a map, started driving and uh, moved to Mammoth and just never left. He worked as a carpenter and took up hunting as a sport. It soon became his full-time job. He hunted everything from ducks and geese to deer, antelope and, yes, even bears. I hunted all the different species, and um, being uh, really uh, known as a killing machine here in Mammoth, and probably one of the most successful hunters in the county. Eventually, uh, we had a huge population of bears here in Mammoth, and uh, the police department came to me knowing uh, my skills as a, a hunter, and they actually hired me to uh, take the life of the bears went out and studied the bears and made a rap sheet, a, a mug book of uh, front and side profile of each one of the bears, and then uh, figured out you know, who was who, who was mating with who, son of who, all that. During those studies to see which bears I was gonna shoot first, I was out uh, at a local dump site and out there in the middle of the night at three o'clock in the morning by myself, and the, um, all of a sudden the bears all looked into the dark and they um, just moved out. And I was like, gosh, well, what's uh, bugging them? and uh, in walked Big, a famous bear named Big. And uh, he strolled in and all the other bears stayed away while that bear fed. And then when he walked off, the other bears came back in, the lessers. I was just like, wow, this is incredible. If I could command the type of respect that he commands, I could become the biggest bear in town uh, artificially, then um, I, I, I could work with the bears and not have to kill them. 
I wish I could tell you that I had some huge epiphany in my life uh, to help the bears. No, nope, I'm just somebody that wanted to accomplish the task at hand. Uh, if we couldn't resolve it, we did need to remove and destroy the bears. I thought, gosh, how could I unionize the bears? How could I just sit them all down in a circle, talk to them and let them know how bad people can be around them? Steve's mission turned from killer to keeper. Go on now, get. Go on, get out of here. Shame on you, move off. I could work them out of a, a situation with my voice or body posturing, clapping my hands. Go on. You know better than this. Stomping my feet. Go on now, get. Move on. But if the body posturing doesn't work, Steve resorts to his special control and aversive tactics kit, or what he calls SCAT. Although this looks like a bunch of ammunition, what it is is all non-lethal or less than lethal ammunition. It scares the wits out of the bear, and they should be run from it. I call this the lipstick round, and it um, blows off like a, a big-sized firecracker at the end of its flight. Here's some rubber buckshot we can see right in there. That it's about like a bunch of pencil erasers. You can tap that bear and let him know uh, that, that he needs to move on. If something does go wrong or we need something uh, uh, in a certain situation, we also have lethal in here. But uh, none of these bears have uh, been hurt this year or any other year. Um, I, I wouldn't tolerate it. Go on, get out of here. Um, we, we, we go to great lengths uh, to make sure that a bear is never hurt uh, uh, when we work with the bear. That's not going to help him learn. Dead bears don't learn a thing. Contrary to what people think, black bears are not ferocious man-eaters. People learn about bears or see them on TV, they kind of lump them all into one group. The grizzly, the polar, the brown, and it, it's far from the case. The black is just the uh, pacifist of the bears. But that doesn't mean they don't pose a serious threat, even for someone as familiar with bears as Steve. He never lets his guard down. And if a bear does show signs that he may charge or attack, Steve always has a plan for a quick escape. In every shot, you see the white tennies. Uh, who works with bears, cougars, coyotes, and, and uh, wears white tennies? Um, I feel kind of self-conscious about it. And uh, to tell you the truth, I'd rather be uh, fast-footed uh, than, uh, you know, have, have anything else. And so I just like to have quick feet, but um, it looks awful dopey having the bear guy wear uh, white tennis shoes. By early summer, the bears are in a virtual feeding frenzy. The larger ones have laid claim to the center of town, where they have the easiest access to food but that can often put them dangerously close to people. 101, Wildlife One, I'm en route to a citizen's complaint on a bear sleeping at an uh, apartment complex. And if you have an officer that could uh, help me out there, I'd appreciate it. Cover. It's an apartment complex with a lot of families and children there. I have a much higher response and maybe a much higher level of seriousness when children are involved. Uh, yeah, you'd be a fool not to. He's in the tube right now underneath us. We have a bear living in the pipe. It's been living in there for a couple weeks now, and the kids check the covert every time they come home from school, and if there's a bear in there, they'll go and get their friends, and they'll all come and bang on the pipe and yell inside the tube and try to hear the bear growl or ag aggravate the bear in any way that they can. It's fun to them. If you leave the bear alone, he's not really going to bother you, <laughs> but when it's aggravated on a daily basis, uh, it can be scary. It can get dangerous. Um, we, I'll just see if the air is drafting the right way with a cigarette. And uh, if it is, we'll go ahead and aerosol him out. I want to put him into the forest and uh, teach him that this is a terrible place to den. Steve's going to uh, deploy his, uh, his less lethal rounds, but we usually, we're deploying out with him, we'll deploy with some lethal slug rounds just in case the bear charges anybody. Let's put the bear down if we have to. For Steve, every call is a race against time. If he can't get the bear safely away, the police will be forced to shoot it. We're just going to uh, 
try to spray this bear out in the open. Like Steve Sarrell sprays pepper spray into the culvert. He usually figures out whatever the downwind direction is and sprays it in there. And it usually that gets the bear to come out. Yeah, we might get a little draw. <laughs> You'll be able to hear his feet on the metal bottom, clink, 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 clink. Oh, what is he doing? All right, I'm going to go ahead and deploy a um, flashbang device. He obviously doesn't want to come out. We'll go ahead and grab another tool. Uh, this one is like a little cherry bomb. Non-lethal. We'll push him out of this tube. Oh, hey, go check it out. There he is. I got him out right away. Let's go do the follow-up right now. It's a uh, mental game. Wow, his voice is touching me from a distance. They don't know what a, a rubber slug is or rubber buckshot. Um, they have no idea. They sting you. You know, make your eyes water. But uh, they're developed not to split the skin or cause injury. Appreciate your support. Thank you, sir. Been working the territory here? Yeah. I've been here what, 12 years now. Um, and Steve, you know, got into this stuff years ago and kind of educated the community and the police departments. Pretty much his program. But we've adopted it, and he's now working under the umbrella for the town. So seems to be doing well. Not every day you get to see all kinds of stuff going on around your house like this, you know? All right. I mean, we got cops shooting 10 feet outside of our door. It's pretty crazy. No, alegamente a las osos. gracias. All right. <laughs> bye bye. Bye. Dollars for donuts. The bear won't be there tomorrow, that's for sure. It's a great call. Nobody got hurt or injured. Uh, the bear's going to have a lot better day. The police officers are feeling good. I'm feeling good. Uh, that's the way you want every call to turn out. In Mammoth, spectacular scenes are everywhere. Can't wait till you see this cub. One of the most heartwarming sights is mother bears, known as sows, with their cubs. It's a beautiful little cub. <laughs> Tearing that log apart looking for bugs. This is how they uh, teach the little ones how to get the natural foods, how to get the beetles, the larvae out of the fallen log there. So that's a good thing for that young bear to learn. What did you find there? What a good bear. She's a real young sow, uh, smaller, probably 175 pounds. A little active today. She must have gotten uh, pushed out of wherever she's been denning. A lot of folks in town sometimes they get scared and then it takes them a couple hours to find a suitable habitat and get settled back down. good so far and this is what I stand for this is what I fight for uh, what we just witnessed uh, that's what our community believes in we're gonna leave them alone and let them bed down in the cool of the day they just had a swim and so uh, that'll be enough for today and we saw what we needed to see good healthy bears doing the right thing By next summer, the cub should be able to take care of itself. But if it hasn't been taught how to be a bear by its mother, it may turn to people. A bear cub may imprint on people if it's a young enough bear. In those circumstances, then, the bear may act more like a pet dog than a wild bear. It's a very dangerous situation, and it's also very unfortunate because you've taken the wild out of the bear. A bear cub that loses its fear of people can accidentally hurt people.
En route to 64 Holiday Way on a report of a bear in a house. Hello. Steve gets a call about a bear breaking yeah. into a house where a young woman is hey, home man, alone. Where are you? All right, I'm on my way. We just been dispatched on a call to uh, right up the street here. It's going to be a bear in a house, I believe, with people. The description we have it was all black, 120, 30 pounds. Uh, with a white uh, blaze on the throat and neck. He's, he's the only bear that matches that description in the town. And I'm just hoping to God that I can catch his hand in the cookie jar and educate him. Hey. Mario's in there somewhere. I got to find out which room she's in. All right. I just arrived on scene. Of course, I don't know if it's still in there. You want to go in? Sure. We can just go in together. Is your daughter in the house? Yeah. Aria! Wait, you're in the back room? This is that way. Stay right there with your daughter, if you would. Aria? 101, Wildlife One, I'm in the house, and uh, we're clearing the house right now. Yeah, point of entry right here. Ten four, we're on the back deck and uh, the kitchen's clear, but let's go ahead and check the whole house first. Claire, your house is clear. Could you tell me what you saw? I heard like a clanking in the kitchen, so I was hoping that it was my dad, but it was three o'clock, so I kind of figured it wasn't him. So I came out through here. And then I came out through this door and I was scared. So I just kind of, I said my dad's name. I said, dad, and looked around the corner and just, I saw the bear pop its head out just right the corner of the kitchen there. You were right here. So and, and I only came this far because I was afraid to go in there. The bear was looking at you from right here? Yeah. And I was scared. So I ran back in there and I shut the door and it slammed. And so I'm assuming the bear got scared and then ran out. Can we take a look where the bear made access into the house? Yeah, sure. The, um, I knew as soon as I saw this, it was a pretty small bear that made access to the house. That window was right next to the kitchen. There's food there. And uh, Ace, uh, being a smart little fella, figured out he can punch that screen out and squeeze through that small window and go inside. When the girl saw him and he saw the girl, they both became very frightened, and they both ran in opposite directions. A young bear is still a potentially dangerous bear, especially one bold enough to enter a house in daylight. Ace has caught the attention of the police, and if Steve can't keep him away from people, he'll be shot. The house is cleared, uh, but we're going to patrol the area right now and see if we can uh, find this bear. Did you see a bear? Uh, no, I saw him on the other street. Uh, I saw him um, minutes ago. By Gomez. All right, our little buddy Ace is completely blowing it. This goes on. People will call for, you know, the destruction of the bear. Did he go right through here, sir? Yeah, he's around the corner. A black one with a white chest. Which way did he go? You know, I don't know. I wasn't here. I my see. Wife was. I had my garage open. I run down the hardware store for a minute, and he got in the garage in the trash. So he was just here a few minutes ago. Yeah. All right, thank you. That's what we're looking for. Okay, I don't know where he went, though. Thank you very much. I would really like to find him right now. Now some time has passed. We certainly can't spank him for uh, what he did a half hour ago. He won't connect it in his mind. And so um, we're going to patrol a little bit more in the area before we call it off. Hello. Oh, there you go. I I I'll follow you in. Steve gets word that Ace has gotten into the same home he was in earlier today. This time, a different family member was in the house. When I got here, I saw I saw a bunch of people out in the 
in the driveway, kind of pointing it way, you know. The bear went that way, the bear went that way. Steve Searles arrived shortly after. Hey, man. Hi. Did he try to come in your house again? Through the same way? Um, a different window. Uh-huh. Yeah, how long ago did he leave? Uh, I called right away as soon as I heard it. Thank you. Steve Searles went ahead and started tracking the bear down. As we got across the street, we saw the bear in between two houses. He's here. You bad bear. You bad bear. Yelling at him hasn't worked, so Steve uses rubber bullets that will startle the bear, not hurt him. It's a psychological game uh, that you're seeing with me and the bear. Everywhere he goes, people are, oh, look at the bear, look at the bear. If everybody said, get the hell out of here, uh, we'd be good to go. But uh, everywhere he goes, people coddle him and uh, treat him nice. He's nice to them, and so on and so forth. And um, busting into a house, you're crossing my line, you know? It's a common occurrence, you know? I mean, the bears live here. The bears were here before we were. You know, we just got to be careful with the way that we treat them because we don't want this kind of thing to happen. They're, they are wild animals. That uh, rubber ball met its mark, and hopefully we'll uh, put a stop to this tonight. Yes, ma'am, we just shot him with a rubber ball and uh, twice. It's non-lethal, it just looks lethal. Is it, a, is it a little one, a baby one? It is just a real young bear. He's Aww. 17 months old, 18 months old, and he's just as dumb as they come. We'll work with him some more this year, and um, I have high hopes that we can turn him around. Steve's job makes for an unconventional family life. Stop that! He's on call 24 hours a day. You bad bear! But as the feeding season heats up, he's called away more and more. Hello. Hi, Marianne. No, no, go ahead. Being married to Steve is very interesting, uh, fun, never a dull moment. There's another little bear coming this way, a little two or three year old. We met in 1985. I was waiting tables and he would come in for dinner and stuff and we got to be pretty good friends and that was it. My wife is from New Zealand. We've been married for 18 years. I'm just the luckiest guy in the world. I go to all these benefits and stuff. Everybody's coming, yay, Steve, Steve's a great guy. But she does everything for me so that I'll take care of the bears. And so she sees that as her way of uh, helping with the animals. You guys going to leave the bears alone? All right. He's a good person trying to do a good thing. And um, he really has his heart and soul in this. Just really very caring, very, very caring. Normally, he's all excited when he comes through the front door, and he's like a kid in a candy store. He loves what he does and does what he loves. I have a nine-year-old son, Tyler Searles. My son sees bears on our porch and in our front yard, and he just thinks that kids live like this. Since he was born, I always have bears, and so um, he just thinks that it's part of life and doesn't know any different. My son, um, he was born here and raised here, and uh, being the son of the bear man, it's uh, a big job, huh? Yeah, everybody knows that you, I'm your dad, huh? Yeah. Tyler's very proud of his dad. If he wants to follow in his dad's footsteps, yeah, sure. We need to pack up, Ty. Would you take this for me, buddy? All right. And a flashlight, too? All right, we're on to the next call, my man. I'm not going to stop Steve from doing what he loves. He would turn into a miserable person. Uh-oh. A friend of mine was out for a moonlight ride with a buddy, and I uh, came upon a bear trapped in a dumpster and uh, called my house and asked if we could come up and see if we could help out. Ah. Yeah, I can hear a cub. Cub inside here. And mama and another cub over here in this area. 
It's the threesome. Yeah. Hey, how cranky is she? I, I stood up. I went over here. She started going. Ooh, 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 ooh. That's she good. gave me a little charge. Uh -huh. I, I gave her some room. Uh -huh. And so we just waiting for you to show up. With these metal sides, it's a perfect bear trap. Uh, the bigger bears, they can pull their way out. But uh, it's a real bad thing for young bears. Hello. Hello. You're OK. You can see that she's a little bit stressed, and she's protecting that one cub, and she's going to stay around till this one gets out. As the minutes pass, the cubs' cries grow more frantic, and the mother more agitated. Just back up a little bit, and let me grab this ladder. A mother bear with cubs has the reputation of being one of the most dangerous animals on the planet. Hello, good girl. Where are you? Where are you? Good girl. There you go. There you go. Let's go. That's all right. Go on. Go on. Most black bear attacks come from an anxious sow defending her young. Can you put a light on her, please? Oh, look at you. Look at you. What are you doing? What are you doing? No, you stay back. You stay back. Uh, all right, I see. I see what's going on. This cub's going to come squirting out of here quick. All right. Back off. Back off. Back off. All right, all right. The bear's got the ladder. Ready? Here we go. Here we go. That's how you want to see every call go. Um, I've seen a lot of cubs locked in dumpsters. This scene was just a little bit different uh, with an extra cub. The sow was getting pretty anxious right there towards the end. But um, as I started putting the ladder down in there, uh, the bear started pulling on it to come on out. So he wanted out in the worst way. And uh, through a little help from a friend, um, it all turned out good. have um, one bear that I've been watching for the last three or four days. His name's Ugly Bear, and uh, he has been laid up. He's not taking water or food. He's not urinating or defecating. I don't know if it's something that he ate or maybe been uh, hit by a car or something like that. But um, from this angle, he doesn't look like he's in distress or anything like that. Uh, the sun comes up. They have to take cover. There is a lot of people in this area. We're kind of geographically in the middle of town, so it's a tenuous thing. The um, Yes, sir. Thank you. The, the manager is only worried about the people that walk by here and that they might bother the bear or see him or tease him. What do you feel like doing, Sarge? I think we maybe should try and get him to move or something, although it's pretty unusual for one of these bears to bed down in a spot like this. We don't see it too often. Um, you got a good point. You know what? Let me just test his metal. I'm just going to walk over to him see if, I, if I can ID him. You want to grab a shotgun lethal just to back here? Or you... Uh, sure, good precaution is a good idea on every call. Hey, buddy. What are we doing this morning? What are we doing? Boy, are you got a big head. Are you okay? Are you all right? See that big, long lip? That means he's getting pissed off. It's all right. I like you, ugly bear. I do. Oh, come on. When Ugly Bear refuses to leave peacefully, Steve steps up his efforts. Hey. Hey. You want to walk out of here? Hey. Hey, he's coming on, this come way, Steve. To us? He's coming this way. Coming this way. Hey, you guys. Let's go. Are you sick? We have some people in the area. We'll all go easy now. And uh, I'm going to give them just a little bit of, uh, uh, come on, let's get out. There he goes. Go on now. Go on. Yeah. 
Bon. Nice. Yeah, he looks like he's walking okay. He looks to be in good health. Uh, we've been watching him for three or four days in bad health. And uh, other than being at the wrong place this morning, looks like he's going to be okay. So we'll monitor him for the rest of the day. Um, crazy. While we were asking a lady to move out of the way, she's reporting a second bear just uh, 100 yards from here. We're going to walk over there and take a look at that. Can you crawl up there? <laughs> How did you know he was up there? He's been there all since yesterday. Since yesterday? Yeah. They're always up in this tree. They are? Wow, wow look at him. Different. All day yesterday, you knew he was up there. Man, we should cause your like a cat. The, the same down. bear, huh? I think so. All right. He's different. He looks smaller than the one yesterday. He does? He does, yeah. Was he sleeping in the same he, spot? No, he was on the other side. He's right, he's right up here. And then I checked, right like, around okay. dusk, and he was gone. So I think this is a new one. All right. Yeah. You know how they found out that he was up there yesterday? One of these people he called urinated him. when somebody uh. walked by. <laughs> <laughs> they did. They're taught all their lives to climb a tree sure. in fear. Well, so he's showing respect to the people. With your guys' permission, we're going to let him sleep up here today. Um, with all this attention, he'll be gone in the morning. <laughs> he's cute. <laughs> By midsummer, Steve has responded to dozens of bear calls. But many of his most troublesome incidents involve young bears. One in particular he's been tracking is a light-colored cub whose mother may have been killed by a hunter. This bear's name is Blondie. It's amazing that he's still alive. He's been on his own for a long time. Uh, real young cub, very small, as you can see. Um, what he's eating is bird food. It's the uh, crack cocaine of a bear's life. These homes here are built uh, right on a uh, stream, so it's a natural corridor for the bears. He's living in the woods. He comes up to the backs of these houses and take advantage of the uh, bird food. Comes over here and leaps from here to the tree and goes up and gets on this branch, and he just takes the feeder and drops him to the ground. Then he goes down the tree and starts his little feast. So he, he's amazing. He's been staying out of trouble the last couple of weeks, but he did enter this home last week through an open window. And uh, that's just terrible for a bear to learn those lessons. Um, this bear, as cute and small as he is right now, is going to grow up to be a big, huge bear. And uh, if we don't train him correctly from the start, then uh, we get what we deserve. I don't want to hurt the bear. I want him to survive. And he's really a cute little guy. He has no fear of people because people have no fear of him. He's standing here looking at me while he's eating. If a bear is eating in front of people, and uh, he becomes conditioned to that, which this bear is conditioned to it, technically I'm part of the problem. By the bear observing me, observing him, it could be that I helped condition the bear that uh, people are loving, they're gentle, they're kind. This is um, a struggle I go through every day. It's still a challenge, you know, whether to just lay into him or to uh, lay off. But this time, I think we're going to lay into him. Steve will use pepper spray. The effects only last 10 to 15 minutes, but hopefully the memory will last much longer. What are you doing, bud? This is going to get you in a bad way. What should we do about it? Huh? What should we do about it? It's you and I. What should we do about it? I'm glad you're alive. What are we going to do about this? What's this? What is this? What is this? Yeah. I'm sorry, buddy. You're on good, huh? You're on good. What was that? 
That stinks, huh? So none of the pepper spray got in his face or in his nose. Uh, the bear is analyzing us, analyzing the decision, the noise that he just heard. Uh, I should have thrown the can at him. Here he comes, thinking about it again. Hi, Blondie. That stuff stinks, huh? Come over here, and I'm going to give you a whole snootful. We can smell the pepper spray. It's still in the air. This thing's been contaminated a little bit, and so that's why the bear moved off. He wants to live. He wants to get on enough weight to make it through the winter. He's obviously not going to make it through the winter at the size that he is. Blondie, just like Ace, just mischief that could lead in the future to the destruction of a bear. If they don't learn the lessons of staying out of houses, you need to curb uh, your behavior, or it could lead to bigger problems. Toward the end of summer, Mammoth Lakes, California is jammed with tourists and black bears. It's just awesome. For the tourists, foraging bears are a form of entertainment. Uh-uh, no closer. But for the bears, late summer triggers a desperate search for food before winter draws near. Friends of mine were up to the lake's base and got to see the uh, salmon cup. It's uh, predictable this time of year. Uh, they can't tolerate being near those big males, and so they bug out and go up to the lakes. At the beginning of the season, this sow was teaching her cub to look for natural foods. But in survival mode, the bear has become bolder. This is a classic example of what you don't want with bears. A young mother uh, with some difficult habits uh, teaching her young. The fishermen, uh, they go off and, and leave their stringers, and uh, she pulls those fish up and uh, feeds them to her cubs. So does it set a, a, a bad example? Absolutely. Determined bear. Oh, yeah, I had one almost two pounder. The bear's got it. Get a good meal. <laughs> I think she's eating it right now. This is what they do. They want their breakfast. They come around lunchtime. They don't bug the people. They just want our fish. For them to get those uh, occasional fish along the shoreline, they're taking out the uh, ones that are dead or dying. And uh, making it part of their diet is not a, a bad thing at all. I think it's appropriate. But stealing stringers, boy, if that goes on every day, it can lead to problems. Hungry bears can be wildly unpredictable. Sometimes they do things that are shocking, even to Steve. Stop that. Go on now. I use a pushpin board to map where my bears are. And uh, just in the last few days, uh, we've had our first frost. We've had a huge wind event. Um, Mother Nature is talking to these bears. The uh, orange pin in the center represents where we are today. That's my house. And uh, the blue pins uh, represent the known bears and where they are here this morning. And uh, where this pushpin map looked a lot different 30 days ago, 60 days ago. It'll indeed look a lot different 30 days from now. We have a, a pretty full habitat. The uh, carrying capacity is uh, probably at its peak or close to it. And uh, the social capacity, how people feel about the bears and a little bit of mischief they get into, um, that's being challenged as well. Is there potential uh, for a problem? Certainly. While out on his regular rounds, Steve tracks a large bear moving through town. A lot of homes around here, a lot of folks, and the bears search those areas out, and I search those areas every day, and uh, we rolled up on them, no harm, no foul, and uh, we'll go take a look. 
The bear heads towards a culvert, then suddenly takes a dangerous detour towards a nearby house. The burglarized in that house. God. He enters through a window, undeterred by the people inside. Can you come out of the house, please? There's a baby in here. I can't. All right. Where's the baby? In bed, asleep. Scaring me. There's a baby right here. A wild bear who feels cornered in a confined space like a house may react out of fear. Get out of here! Get out of here! And the outcome could be deadly. You bad bear! Get out of here! Steve drives the bear out the same way it came in. One on one, wildlife one. We just saw a bear uh, live real time uh, break into a unit. Uh, the lady was out here uh, enjoying the day. Uh, asked her for people that are in the house. Uh, there was a small baby. It's still in there. It's safe. The police department will come to back me up right now. I'm still vibrating. <laughs> it's pretty scary. By the time an officer arrives, the bear is long gone. Well, hello. Hello, sweetie. Hi there, how are you? Hello. You better thank this man. You saw the bear, huh? <laughs> thank God I didn't see him. <laughs> Scared me enough. Yeah. Disaster narrowly averted. But the most reckless bear this season is Ace. He's almost been run over by a car. Broken into the same home twice and been shot with a rubber bullet after stealing a bird feeder. And Steve has gotten another call that the little bear is at it again. It's trail mix and gummy bears, the attractant this time. They eat such a huge volume of food. That's all they do is eat. The bears are just a stomach with four feet. They'll eat just about anything this time of year. We'll follow the trail backwards and see where it came from. We got three here. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. A bear wouldn't walk very far with um, such a uh, prime treat. So I'm guessing he got it real close to here. I've seen Ace many times here, three or four times. And he's been in the neighborhood. He's a very cute cub. But uh, he's, you know. I'd say two or three feet high, and a little, little challenging. Yeah, I'm guessing it came right through here and got into this property here. Well, either a cub got in the car or a dog. Has that little black bear been around here again? Yes, ma'am. He was here just a little bit ago. Have you seen him? Well, we've seen him earlier, but not today. Not today? Living in Bear Alley, we get to see the bears quite often. They come right through from the mountains on the other side of our subdivision, and they come right through between our houses. He just got a 12-pack of trail mix and gummy bears. We're used to them. We understand we they're to be observed. We don't try to go near them. I mean, we definitely know that they're, this is not Disneyland where we live. This is a real place. We need to put a stop to it. Oh, yeah. He's going to get hurt or killed. Yeah. And um, just give me a call, even if he's not doing anything wrong and I'll come over and professionally be mean to him and reinstill his natural fear of humans. This has gone on for, you know, a month now. Yeah. And uh, we need to put a stop to it. Oh, yeah. It's sad. It really is. Um, bears, I guess, just do what comes naturally to them. And if they can find food, they find it whenever they, wherever it needs to be. And if it's in a car, uh, that's where they go get it. And, but unfortunately, that's not acceptable to the, people who might own the car. Ace is already too comfortable around people, so much so that city officials like Councilman Skip Harvey are concerned about what will happen when he gets big. Ace is actually in a position right now where if he continues his behavior as he has in the past, we're going to have to make a decision on whether or not he can be coaxed to go back into the wild and live like a bear should or whether he may have to get an order to take him out. With mounting pressure on Steve to get Ace under control, he follows the gummy bear trail, hoping to find him. 
There he is. I just want to uh, catch him and uh, kick his ass again and see if we can uh, improve improve his uh, attitude around people. Let's go up there. I'm tired of playing cat and mouse with this little bear. Next time I catch him, I'm going to light him up. We love our bears, but when they become criminals and start breaking into houses and put human life in jeopardy, then we have to take that into consideration and take the proper action to resolve it. Ace isn't the only young bear getting into trouble. Blondie's at it again, too. OK, thank you, and we'll be in route. He's back stealing food from the same house where Steve caught him just a few weeks ago. And I don't know how he got up. Yes, ma'am. Is he up there now? He's laying on the deck. He's right here. We need to teach that bear a lesson. What are you doing here? What are you doing here? Hey, what are you doing here? You bad bear. You bad bear. No more. Go on, go home. Go home. Get out of here. You bad bear. don't like to spray bears like that, you can see that it painted the bear red. Uh, not, not only that, but um, the sound of the <laughs> is super unnatural. Pepper spray is affecting his ability to smell, to see, and taste. I couldn't take him to a closer point of doom and disaster and potential death in his mind. All of the things that he relies on for life have been shut down right now. And that's part of my job, is uh, cruel to be kind, to educate that bear that this has got to stop. Uh, that's why I sprayed him point blank in the face. I think that uh, the very best thing uh, is what we did. Uh, teach that bear a lesson. Stay away from people. They will entrap you. They will run you over with cars. Uh, they will uh, uh, be kind and cutesy with you and then call the police or call the Department of Fish and Game. So uh, I'm always reluctant to use that much pepper spray on a bear. I know how bad it, you know, it hurts them for 12, 15 minutes. But um, I think that in hindsight and, and looking at all the information that we have, it was the very best thing I could have done. We'll take a look at the, the uh, steps that these people have taken to alleviate the uh, problem. The uh, tree here that makes access uh, to the second story deck has been wrapped with um, sheet metal to um, stop the bear from climbing the tree that makes access. Uh, the second thing that happened is the bears were using the um, these uh, rods that, that are structural to the deck, they were using it as a ladder system to get up on the deck. The homeowners have gone to even greater length and yesterday installed uh, wraps, uh, metal aluminum wraps on all these posts so that the bear can't get traction on the posts. Uh, these folks spent, you know, a lot of money uh, to make their deck bear proof and yet they had the bear on their deck for a second time. You can see his paw prints right there. Uh, he pu pulled himself up. That's easy to do with his body weight. And um, got up here like this. Then he um, pow did a power move. He grabbed right here. His back foot, that's a back foot print right here. He put his foot right here, his other hand right here, put his other hand up here, pulled himself up like I'm doing. I'm not as quite as uh, agile as a black bear. We can see his hand prints right here. Uh, then he did a one hand muscle right here, pulled himself up and gained access to the deck. Here's Blondie's hair.
always kind of hurts my feelings. It's, uh, it's a double-edged sword. You know, loving bears is to uh, reprimand them, and to reprimand a beautiful little bear like that uh, it doesn't bring me any pleasure. It's not a fun thing, but uh, certainly proved the point. And I bet my bottom dollar, uh, the bear won't be back anytime soon. Um, we taught uh, the young bear a lesson, Blondie, that uh, that you won't soon forget. Got a fire over here in Sherwin Lake. The aircrafts are coming in on it. The worst thing that we could have happen in our community right now is a forest fire. After a long, hot summer, the Sierras are a powder keg of dry vegetation. Forest fires are frequent and frightening. Probably the two number one things that uh, Mammoth cares uh, most about is the wildlife and uh, fire. Today we have uh, both. We have a couple hundred acres burning just a mile east of town of prime uh, wildlife habitat and bear habitat. We can hear the planes overhead, and uh, they're taking an all-out aerial assault on it today, and hopefully it's going to get this thing under control. Forest fires drive wildlife out of the wilderness and into populated areas. We just got a thing on my voicemail that a bear was hit this morning on Highway 203. It's deceased, and uh, we'll go on. Um, the uh, road department has picked it up and put it out, and we're going to go down and uh, see if we can measure it up and identify which bear was uh, hit this morning by a car. It's going to be right down here in the town yard, and we'll try to take it off their hands and uh, treat it with a little bit of respect. It doesn't turn out to be a local bear, but even the death of an unfamiliar one is painful. It's a young bear, male. This bear is two and a half years. Out in traffic and uh, paid with his life this time. And um, There's nothing more we can do for this bear except treat him for it with some respect and put him out in the forest. And um, we'll go ahead and take uh, possession of the bear at this time. We have a... Uh... <clears throat> at the landfill, uh, we have a pit for dogs and cats. Uh, I don't like it. I don't like the wild bears going in there or any wild animals. And so uh, I put them out in the forest and do it my way. And uh, we'll say a prayer, and put this guy out, let him return to return to the soil. The local tribe is the Paiute Shoshone. They are the bear clan, the bear people. They're still alive today. They honor me and my family for the work that we do with the bears in the white people's way. And uh, they teach me about uh, their way. This is uh, sweet sage. Um, this is uh, called a smudge stick. The Paiute people believe that um, that the bear takes our prayers. We pray to the bear, and uh, he's here to help us out. And um, they believe that the bear, uh, we pray to the bear, the bear spirit, and that the bear takes the message up to the top of the mountain uh, to the creator uh, with the smoke and um, to your god, whatever god you pray to. And that the eagle takes the message from the bear and takes it up to the heavens. We might be thankful for another day that we have here, for the water we drink, for the air we breathe, for the food that we have, uh, for the winged ones, the ones that hop, the ones that crawl, uh, the four-legged, the two-legged. A smudge stick, it's to um, clean us up a little bit. 
We'll just smudge him off. Last thing he's seen was a car. And uh, we'll just try to um, make it in a good way and that this bear could go on and, and go back to the earth. We have a beautiful spot for him uh, with his home in the back. And uh, we'll put him up on this little ridge here. And um, the animals will come and, and take them and eat them. And um, we like that a lot better than putting them in our landfill. All right, buddy. Doya, doya, quina. Doya, doya, quina. All right, buddy. We'll see you later. The end of summer marks a new phase in the feeding season. For Steve, it's the craziest time of the year. What in the world? It's what he calls the fall shuffle. Get out of there. Come on, let's go. This is the time when the bears are moving around and changing it up as they make weight for the winter. Go on now. I have bears that are showing up. There wasn't room for them in town. The, the uh, town was full at its capacity. As those big bears made weight and, and moved out of town, then it, it leaves a void or a sink for other bears to come in and, and try to make their fill. Every year, the town braces itself for the onslaught of a whole new crop of hungry bears. I had incidents where people had food on the table, and the bear actually went right through the window. And just because the food was there, they smelled it, they saw it. and that was a major concern. You know, so we tried to educate and say, look, you know, you live in the mountains, beautiful area, but still, if you're cooking and the food or those pies on the table, just like Yogi the bear, they're going to go after it and try to get it. All right, I'll be right there. We had a call. The sow that we've been uh, tracking up at the Lakes Basin and uh, her little cub had come to town, and first thing they did was get into trouble. The baby cub got locked in a car. We rolled out there real quick, and uh, it'd been in there for quite a while. Here we go. Come on, you're out of there. Come on, come on. Let's go this way. Do you guys have a, do you have a beeper or something? You're OK. We all right? All right, all right. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. No damage to the car. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. The sow, she wasn't uh, peeling out and getting the hell out of there. I didn't want to leave the area without the cub hooked back up with the sow. Go on. The sow is three, three and a half years old. Go on now, get. It'd be like a teenager having a kid. Go on, get. Ha. If she doesn't have a lot of life's experiences, and she's not teaching her young. Uh, the best habits. Uh, bears need to teach their young where to uh, get that natural food source. Go on now, get! The bear opened the car door, got in, oh. and then closed it and opened it again. Wow. Closed it, and the, bit, the cub just was stuck in here. Wow. Took a bite right here, took a chunk out of this. We tore out this whole thing. And then there's a panel on the back door that we ripped off. Not a good thing. Probably $500 to $1,000 worth of damage to the inside of this young lady's car. It's just that time of year. You got to be ready for these calls and, and for uh, what the knuckleheads might do. But some situations are far more dangerous than others. Hey, Rick. Steve gets word of a break-in at the golf course snack bar. When he arrives, he discovers a bear he's known for years. Hey, one ear, stop get it. Get down there. Get, get back, one ear. Get down. Go on. Go back. Go back. Go back. To personally look in my face and not move away when I approach him, that doesn't stand with me. It was 
really scary because it was almost like a face-off with the bear and Steve and they were kind of going back and forth and the bear just did not want to leave us alone and not want to leave the stack bar alone because of all the food. No. That one here. Get that. Go back now. To come in for unnatural food in the middle of the day, not uh, remembering what a black bear is supposed to do, move away from people. He knows me, I know him. He need to move away as soon as I approached. Boy, this old bear uh, and me go way back. Jeez, it's got to be nine or 10 years ago uh, when we first met one year and I uh, had some run-ins with them on the elementary school campus with children present. Uh, it was during recess and uh, our school is right next to the open forest. It really crossed my mind that if I was gonna do bear work and be seen responsibly within the bear community, that the proper thing to do was uh, shoot and kill one ear just for being on the campus. He was a huge adult male with his ear bitten off from fighting. And uh, there was about 200 kids present. It would have been uh, horrible to destroy that bear in front of those little eyes. And uh, I just get going with the successes of the program. And um, we used non-lethal on the call. We had a lethal back up there. We had uh, myself and another officer went non-lethal. And we had a final officer close the road so we could put him out in the forest. The bear left that day and didn't return for two years. It's one ear. Where have you been? I haven't seen you in years. It's one ear. That's incredible. It's your first day home, and you're in big-ass trouble. Uh, we tuned him up again. So, hey, none of that. None of that. Took about 60 seconds to reinstill his natural fear of humans. Uh, he left. No more. No more. Today, One Ear is showing no sign of leaving. He's backed into a culvert, creating a face-off with Steve. It's just not typical being a bear acting like this. I'm eight or 10 feet from him, and uh, he's just sitting there looking at me. He wants what's behind me. So it's a standoff as long as I'm here. Never seen anything so rude. No more. No more. Yeah, and you guys are going to have to take a drop. Sorry. It was crazy. There were golfers on hole nine that didn't even know that they were actually right on top of the bear, and the bear was in the tunnel right below them. And they were looking for their ball. They had no idea what was going on. This will not stand. And he can't be uh, hanging out here scaring people or intimidating anybody. Wildlife one, Sam one. Wildlife one, good. You know what, could you meet with me at the Divot Bar and Grill on the golf course? If you could bring some non-lethal in a 12, that'd be good. I don't know if he's distressed or having a problem competing for food. He's not showing enough fear of humans and we're about to give him plenty of fear of humans. When I got there, uh, one ear was in the culvert. He was been chased to the mouth of the culvert, and he wasn't leaving. He knew the people were scared of him, and he could scare them away to get food. That's probably one of the most dangerous uh, types of situations we can have with these guys, where, where they're were emboldened enough to confront people. He obviously got the one ear from being in a fight. Indeed. I've seen scars all over his face. Does that kind of indicate what his general disposition is in his own community? Not only that, but it might be an indicator. When he comes out of there, you'll see he's small in size for his age, and uh, he might be on the downward swing of life, um, a bear that's uh, being pushed out of his own habitat. He's obviously been in a lot of fights, had a lot of years on this uh, earth. Our primary goal is to make them afraid of people. And in the long run, that was fortuitous because we were able to use, you know, quite a bit of our bear arsenal on one ear and really teach him a lesson. I'm gonna put one right over the top and right on his butt, I think. Hey, get out of here. Go on. Get, get. Go on. The first shots are beanbag rounds. They won't hurt the bear, but hopefully they'll sting him enough to get him on the run. Go on, get. Steve follows up with a loud but harmless flashbang device.
There you go. I was able to get three bean bags on him, and he was able to get some flashbangs in there, which is devastating and loud to the bear when he's inside when those things go off. You can imagine being in a trash can and someone beating it with a baseball bat. That's how Wonder felt. After that, he never returned. You didn't hurt him. No, no, it's just spanks. It's just a beanbag round, and it's just used to, to teach them that people suck, that we can be mean. I want to put the wild back in their eyes. I want to put the wild back in their heart. I want them to be afraid of people and run away when they see them. I rarely get to be with the bears in a no harm, no foul setting. It's always, you know, responding or tracking or doing this or doing that. And I'm tired. I got a bunch of brand new bears, none of the old push button bears that knew the ropes. When I get this tired, sometimes I'll go out and find a bear and just be with them and, um, and just try to re-energize them. Steve finds a familiar old bear under the porch of a vacant cabin. There's no need to drive him out since no people are present. Hello. Hello. I haven't seen this bear in two years. It's half nose. I didn't expect to see him here. This is a real shot in the arm and more than I had hoped for. Hi. This nostril's been bit off by an old bear I used to be friends with. That's a six and a half, seven foot bear in now. All right, all right. Boy, you look good. You look good, pal. I'm proud of you. I can't believe you're still alive, buddy. A big heavy bear like that uh, is a trophy for hunters. And me not having eyes on with them for the last couple, three years, uh, you just have to assume that they either died by natural causes um, or uh, were shot, you know, during the hunting season. Again, he's got to be 12 years old. Hi. Hello. Do you remember me? Can you smell me? You do remember, huh, Half Nose? You do remember, huh? This is the relationship that I have with some bears. I've worked with that bear and probably spent 60 hours of time with him at that close proximity in his life. Did it lead to him coming closer to people or becoming habituated or conditioned to people? Actually, the opposite, he hasn't been in town in years. We used to vocalize like this for hours. And um, what I was saying, I'm not sure what he was saying, I'm not sure, but we used to enjoy a lot of time together. You do remember, huh? He just got home, and we didn't want to push him out on him under his deck in the middle of the day. We'll go ahead and leave him on and check on him a little later, but great day for the bears. People say I love bears. I love my wife, I love my son, I love my community. Do I love bears? I sure love this one. Thank you. We'll see you later. Every time a bear is caught too close to humans, it runs the risk of being destroyed. One of this season's repeat offenders has been the young bear, Ace. After disappearing for almost two months, he's back, bigger, bolder, and living on borrowed time. It appears Ace has gone in through an open sliding glass door, uh, went in the kitchen and helped himself while the homeowner was working in the garage. Uh, the homeowner is a retired officer that I've worked for, worked with for years and years, and um, he ended up throwing a chaise lounge chair at him and running him off. Looks like the police department is going to um, issue a shoot order for this bear. It's a coin toss on which way this could go. Steve's got one more chance to force Ace to leave for good or watch him die. We'll see how the day plays out, but I'm gonna spend the next couple hours just canvassing this area where he's, he's off and at. If we uh, ha have any luck at all, 
we could get a hold of this bear in the next few hours and um, see if we can convince him with non-lethal to leave the area and um, maybe change the outcome of uh, what's about to happen. There's Ace's rear footprint. There's his front footprint. Absolutely the same bear. There's a fresh bear bed right there, and uh, he could be uh, hiding here during the day. We'll keep an eye on it. This area is clear. We're going to work across the street. haven't destroyed a bear in a dozen years for public safety. I'm really concerned. Uh, it is, uh, it'd be a real hard thing for my community. Um, hundreds of people have seen and interacted with this little bear. Uh, that's part of what got him into the jam he's in. And um, it's led to what looks like will be his death. You know, as a chief here in Mammoth Lakes, my primary responsibility is public safety. And when a bear habitually breaks into homes because that's where he's learned to forage for food, uh, that bear becomes a uh, public safety bear. And uh, I'm not willing to compromise a human life to uh, save a bear that uh, habitually breaks into homes and has confrontation with humans. We've identified this bear because it has broken into as many as eight or nine homes. About half of those homes have been occupied. It's crawling through open doors, going through screened windows. And traditionally, once humans have confronted it, it leaves right where it came in at. But the fear is that a human being gets between that bear and his exit point, And that is when we're going to have a major problem with this bear. What are you doing? You bad bear! The rubber bullets sting, but won't penetrate the bear's hide. Let's go find him right now. You know, um, we couldn't catch him with a hand in his cookie jar, but I just don't have the time to wait for that. Uh, we need to move the bear out of the area. So I went ahead and uh, tapped him twice with a rubber bullet. And um, uh, I'm going to continue to uh, pursue this bear and catch up to him. And I'll repeat the process until, uh, until we get the right results. The thing is, when he goes in the forest, we never haze him. We never harass him. That's how we um, applaud him for good behavior. Uh, today, with a shoot order on his life, um, if I catch him just right out in the forest, right behind and close to these homes, I will take extra measures to uh, move him even further through the forest. And so uh, it's not my typical way, but uh, this isn't a typical scene.
like to save his life, really. For more than a week, there's no sign of Ace. You didn't see him today. No, I haven't seen him, and All I'm right. sorry, but I know we had three police officers come through the other night with their guns. Did you see a bear go through here? All right. Then Steve gets word Ace has been spotted. He responds as fast as he can, still hoping to save the little bear's life by driving him out of town for good. I'm not mad at the bear. I'm not mad at myself. I'm not mad at the police. I'm not mad at my community. Um, there's no, it's nobody's at fault. It's still an unpredictable thing and something that just doesn't come with exact answers. This is where we need Knob Hill. There he is, right here on your right. The bear eludes Steve, but not for long. You bad bear. He's directly above us, about 40 feet above my head. Now we are in a controlled situation. He can't run off. I'm going to go ahead and set him up. As soon as the cars are gone, he's going to come down that tree as fast as he went up it. And I'm going to set him up and light his fire right there at the bottom of the tree. So that's my plan. At least he uh, climbed the tree and fleed his natural instinct. That, that was correct. So that, that's a positive thing. And all the time we've spent with this bear, he's never climbed a tree. We are putting the wild back in him, but we'll just see what happens. The stalemate moves from early evening and into nightfall. Finally, Ace climbs down. It's too dark to hit the bear with pepper spray. So Steve prepares a flashbang device. He hopes the powerful blast will be enough to scare the bear off for good. You bad bear. Go on, get. Get out of here. You bad bear. Mono one, wildlife one. Wildlife one. One single non-lethal round fired at Alpine Circle. The bears left the area we're code for. Steve and Ace have had a long and frustrating season. With winter on the horizon and a shoot to kill order still in effect, Steve can only hope that this most recent and loudest confrontation will be their last. It's late fall, and the feeding season is almost over. The bears have put on enough weight to make it through the long winter hibernation. This is the end of the year. We just took this night. It's really cold out here, colder than it looks. And um, all the bears are scattering and going up on, on this cliff right here and on this hill. It's just packed with bears. That's where their winter over. The first snow of the season is imminent, and the bears start to retreat to their dens. They're almost uh, lethargic from uh, the huge amount of food that they've consumed in such a short time. It's a part of the year that I always look forward to after all the work. I get just to spend hours and hours with them at, at close proximity. Hello. Hello. You are ready for winter. Some of the bears will spend the winter in town. Areas that were off limits during the summer, like under porches and in culverts, will become perfect dens once covered by snow. The bears will be safe from humans who don't even know they're there. They're buried under the snow. There's no light. They don't eat. They don't uh, um, hydrate. They don't defecate or urinate for six months. The bears live off the fat they've put on during their summer feeding frenzy. Their heart rates drop dramatically, but they're not completely asleep they can still respond to danger 
and mothers can take care of their cubs. As far as sleeping, they just do it out of boredom. And so um, uh, the bears uh, are preen every day uh, in the den, uh, clean their, their privates, uh, re-fluff their nest, if you will, and then spend a big portion of the day sound asleep. But uh, they're just uh, killing time, waiting for the spring to come so they can restart their cycle. Steve won't see the bears for several months, so he takes time to visit their dens to say goodnight. A sleepy time, huh? You look great, dude. I'm sorry for bugging you all the time, but you've taught us a lot this year. Hi, ugly bear. Hi, buddy. Looking a lot better. He was sure sick there for a few days, but uh, he's doing good now. He's not gotten in any, any trouble all summer long. So uh, not the prettiest bear, but I've uh, kind of come to like him. So he's got his winter digs right here, and uh, if it doesn't flood, he'll be all set. All right, ugly bear, have a good winter. <laughs> The last time Steve sees the sow and cub who caused so much trouble earlier in the season, they're headed away from town. That's a good bear. That's a good bear. And it looks like the wild bear one ear is nowhere to be found and has retreated back into the mountains. It just can't be a better example than one ear. It makes me smile because uh, I've gone through this with him, oh, five times over 10 years. Go on, get. Go on, get. Uh, I get close to killing him, and uh, then we use non-lethal and catch him red-handed. Every single time, the same results. And within days, he leaves the area, and uh, to this day, we haven't seen him again. As for Ace, the marauding youngster who faced a death sentence, Steve hasn't seen the little bear for almost a month, and that's good news. Ace, about Three or four weeks ago, I wouldn't give you a nickel for him. It looked pretty grim for him. I thought that he was just incorrigible, but right now he's staying the heck out of trouble. I've looked everywhere to try to find that bear. As a bear worker, a wildlife worker, some answers I'll never know, but I really hope and look forward uh, to seeing him in the spring. After the busiest bear season in Steve's 12 years on the job, winter finally blows in. With the bears in their dens, Steve can finally get a good night's sleep, at least until next spring, when the Mammoth Lakes bear cycle starts up again. Who are the bears to me? They are the opposite of everything that's wrong in, in our society. Um, they lead by example. They're, they're total gentlemen. They're so forgiving. They're so live and let live. They're willing to share that with me, and boy, I just love them for it. <laughs>